Welcome back to The Daily Grind with Jen. I'm your host, Jen Hernandez, coming to you today from Studio 73 Productions. I got my big old cup of coffee, and I am so ready to get into this latest episode. I'm going to be giving you a little roadmap today, so going to kick it off with an update on the home front. Then we're going to chat a little bit kind of about a lessons learned in regards to the whole homeschooling while working at home. You know, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And I'm going to close today's show off with sharing with you guys a little bit about some self-realization I came to over this last week about kind of my my personal journey right now and what what it looks like, what my goals are. So with that in mind, let's jump right on into the show. So I really felt like I needed to recharge my batteries. I was, I don't want to say completely burnt out, but I was to the point where I could feel myself starting to burn out. The, just the really long days, constantly battling between trying to make sure that, you know, the kids got the academics that they were needing to get in, that the schoolwork was getting forwarded to whoever it needed to get forward to, that all of my actual, you know, work for my employer was getting handled and getting addressed. And then, you know, worrying about things such as the laundry, dishes, planning dinners, cooking dinners, (laughs) um, all of that stuff. I was just a bit worn, you know, and like I said, I wasn't to the point where I was total burnout, but I could feel it coming. So I, it it all kind of started with Mother's Day. I was like, look, it's Mother's Day. There are a million and 20 things that I should be doing, but I don't want to do any of that. So um, I'm not going to, I'm going to enjoy Mother's Day. I'm going to have a lazy day. So I did. And it was great. I loved it. Um, and the awesome thing about Mother's Day is that all of my my kids in one form or another came to me and um, seeing them all and spending time with them all. And the, like I said, the various different ways and modes was was awesome. It did so much to kind of recharge my batteries and give me a sense of joy and and, and of peace as well. So uh, for example, I got to see my daughter-in-law on Saturday night. She did a surprise drop by visit and dropped off a Mother's Day gift. And I got to visit with her for a little bit. And I hadn't seen her in a while because she doesn't live uh, particularly close. Now she's been more than willing to come up and see us during the quarantine, but we haven't felt super comfortable with that when it was all about, you know, hey, you can only do necessary travel. And honestly, coming to hang out and have a visit with, you know, us and the kids really doesn't fall under necessary. So it was such a joy to be able to spend just a little bit of time with her and see her and know that she thought about me, you know, on, on Mother's Day weekend. That was wonderful. Then on Sunday, my stepdaughter and my son-in-law surprised me and they had texted me, you know, to say Happy Mother's Day, which I, I figured they would. But then they came by and they visited and it was a gorgeous day. And so we were outside and the kids were outside with us. They brought their brand new puppy, which is, oh my gosh, he is so super cute. And we just had a lovely time hanging out together. Now, I hadn't seen my stepdaughter and son-in-law since Jordan's wedding in February. Uh, I hadn't seen them in so long. And so it was so great to just catch up and see how she's doing. And um, she looked amazing. Oh my gosh, she looks so fabulous. It was just so exciting to see them both and spend time with them. Then on that later on that day, I took David and Elena. We visited with my mom and dad for a bit and, you know, spent time with them. And mostly the kids played outside, but it was nice to sit down at the kitchen table and visit with my mom and spend some time with her and let her know that, you know, like I said before, my mom's amazing. So just having that time to communicate and visit was something that we hadn't been able to do on a regular basis, made everything feel just a little bit normal. It was a little unusual in that, you know, my dad had kind of hoped that we would do a big family gathering for Mother's Day. And my aunt really tried to do the same thing as well. Um, I didn't really feel comfortable doing a huge big family gathering because I don't trust my kids to respect the social distancing boundaries. And so I also figured my brother's kids would be in that same boat too. 
So my mom ended up seeing my brother and I in shifts, but it was wonderful to sit down and visit with my parents and get to see them a little bit. I really enjoyed that. Perhaps the the biggest thing or the biggest surprise was on Monday, we had a FaceTime call with Jordan Ray and being able to actually just see him, it was it was so amazing. Um, we spent quite a bit of time with him on the phone. He had to, poor kid, he had to be outside in order to get a good enough signal that we could FaceTime with him. So he's outside in that hot Georgia sun and he, poor kid looked like he might have been melting at one point with all of the, the fatigues that he had on. And he's like, yeah, well, we only got like one summer one issue to us and they don't really want us using it all that much. So I'm having to wear the winter ones and, and he did look hot. But just being able to like see him with our own eyes and hear from him, you know, how he was being able to like share his experiences thus far, what it's been like for him, how he's feeling with it. It did so great for Mike and I in terms of reassurances. We both commented several times throughout last week about how much it meant to see him with our own eyes, how great he looked. Uh, while we were FaceTiming with him, that he's not just doing okay. In fact, he's doing better than okay. He's doing great. So in terms of like worrying or stressing or anxiety over him, I didn't really think I had too terribly much of that left. I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm, I'm handling this pretty well. However, after I had seen him, I realized, you know, I guess I was still holding on to a little bit of of, of of stress about that or worry or anxiety because I just felt that all just like slip away and I feel I feel good about where he is. I am so excited for him. And that's really what got me started on this concept that I think it's time to recharge my batteries because when we got off the phone with him I was happy. I was so happy. Like I couldn't focus on anything else. It ended up really kind of being a bit of a throwaway day for homeschooling. I made the kids just do very little stuff. No real structured work for the most part. I think there was a little structured work, but not a ton. And in terms of my own work day, I ended up taking uh, a little bit of leave that day so that I could talk on the phone with him. And for because I said we were on the phone for like an hour and a half it was awesome and then to take off a little bit of leave to do with the kids and it just kind of set this tone for the rest of the week in terms of recharge and rest and it was good there were some some consequences to to this rest and recharging but overall I'm glad I did it and I think it was the right call for me um it gave me an opportunity to really t take a beat and and just breathe instead of being like feeling like I'm on this hamster wheel where you know revolving constantly trying to get everything done it it was just like you know what no we're not going to go there not going to do all that other stuff we're going to get the bare minimum done and we're going to take some time just to rest. We're going to take a couple days where we're not going to be so heavy on the mommy instruction for homeschool. So the kids had to be a little bit more independent with some of the things they were doing. And we also kind of harkened back to some of the days when we weren't doing as much mommy instruction, but they were doing a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with each other in terms of reading out loud and or flashcards. And there was a little bit less prep on my end because I was not putting together packets for the next day. So this last week, I didn't do packets the night before for them because that actually takes quite a bit of time. Instead, what I did with that extra time is I did get some work done that had to get done. But what I did more so like in the evenings, instead of, you know, launching in on prepping the homeschool stuff or trying to get the kitchen all cleaned or, you know, making sure I was up to date on the laundry or tackling the office slash playroom because I do need to go through and kind of clear it out. It seems like whenever we clear out an area of the house and no one knows where to put something, they put it in that space. So at this point, it really does need to go through and just 
like with a garbage bag and just clear a bunch of stuff out. But instead of doing all that, which would have been also a good option, what I decided to do was take some time for me. So I read a couple books, nothing particularly heavy or dense. I made sure I still did my Bible study. I did enjoy that. I also made sure I got a decent amount of sleep because going on four to five hours of sleep. So I can do that, you know, here and there and be fine. Or I can do that for a week or two. But man, after that couple week point, you know, you would think my body would get used to it. No, my body just gets cranky and my body just gets tired. And that's kind of where I was. I was to that point where my body just needed some sleep. So I, I decided, you know what, you want sleep? I'm going to let you sleep. So I got some decent sleep for once, which really did a a good bit for my own kind of internal uh, calming down. So uh, I felt pretty at ease, pretty relaxed. I know that it probably caused a little bit of stress for others in the household that mommy was kind of going on this this break that was not planned. But... um, Sometimes you need to take a break. And that's just where I was. The other thing that kind of came up this last week that it was just kind of interesting. So I'm going to share it with you guys. I had my first Zoom hearing for uh, for work, for a court hearing. So I was supposed to be appearing in Kitsap Superior Court. And it's a little bit of a drive for me to get to Kitsap. But with everything that's going on, I had already decided even if the courtroom was open, I was not going to be appearing in person. I was going to see if I could get uh, permission to appear via what is called court call, which is basically a telephonic appearance. But you go through this particular company that sets it up. And the reason why you go through them is that the sound quality is much better than if you call in and they put you on speakerphone. But the court didn't really want me even to do court call. Once we looked into it, they wanted us to do Zoom. So I set up everything for Zoom. And I had a couple other friends that I had seen posting on Facebook that they had had Zoom court appearances. So I looked at those posts, see, seen what they had described their experiences and decided for me, the only way I could do this and feel comfortable is if I dressed and, you know, hair, makeup, clothes, the works, as if I were going to court. So I got up, I got dressed, did my hair, did my makeup, put on a suit, and there I was in front of my computer, logging in first thing in the morning for my Zoom hearing. And it was interesting because I was not the only attorney who was calling in. I was not the only female attorney calling in in full suit, hair, and makeup. There were I think one or two other men attorneys that called in and they were in various stage of I mean it was professional dress but it was a little bit more casual like I don't think any of the men were wearing blazer suit and tie I think one guy was wearing like a dress shirt I don't recall if he had a tie or not there was like someone from the clerk's office maybe that was calling in or somehow a, a with the courts, but not an attorney calling in. And so he was just in like regular street clothes. Then there were some pro se's. That means someone who was a party to a case, but is not represented by an attorney. They're representing themselves. They were dressed in regular street clothes. And then the most interesting thing to me of all, the judge called in, not from the courtroom. The Zoom, uh, the Zoom hearing showed her, it looks like she was probably sitting at, I'm guessing what must have been like a kitchen or a dining room table because behind her appeared to be like her kitchen, but she was in her robe. And then they also had a camera that was facing her bench. And so you could see her courtroom with the bench there. Her clerk was not on camera, but he was actually inside the courtroom and just kind of what we would describe as air traffic controlling, you know, what's coming next. Uh, If the judge needed a a court date, the clerk was the one who looked up the date and gave it to her. And then there also was, it looked like there was a call in, but no video, and that was for the court reporter. So it actually all, far as I know, worked pretty well. I'm not too, the only reason I say as far as I know is because I, I didn't hear anything from the court reporter that she couldn't hear well or that everything wasn't getting recorded well. So, as far as I know, it went good. It was quick. It was efficient for the most part. And it made me also think, I wonder if this is going to be happening in a lot more cases. If so, it would cut down so much on travel time. And for me, that would be amazing because I represent a state agency who is 
all across the state of Washington. And I really do try and avoid having to travel whenever possible because of that. And there are a number of cases that I will not appear on for my client because it's actually pretty cost prohibitive to have me travel, for example, to Spokane for a hearing where at stake is only a couple hundred dollars. They're going to spend so much more having me travel to Spokane and back than to do the hearing. It, it's actually more cost effective for them to uh, not have uh, attorney representation for those things. So that was just uh, something I thought was interesting that I wanted to share with y'all. The other, the last thing I kind of wanted to share with you on like the the home side, the personal front, and this kind of goes more towards the theme of like recharging and, you know, renewing energies and, and positive vibes and good spirit is that this last Friday, uh, the kids' teachers came through and did a, a school parade. It was actually really cool. So they told us, like on Monday, hey, we're gonna be doing this parade, we're coming through all the neighborhoods. And then at some point during the week, they emailed out the route that they would be taking. So everybody knew, you know, what's the closest point to you. And for us, it was just like down at the bottom of our heel. So it was really close. And we went down there Friday, we kind of made an afternoon of it. It was one of those days that I was like, hey, this is going to be a light school day, very minimal stuff that you're going to be having to do. It's Friday. Mom's trying to get work done. Mom has a court hearing. And you guys have the school parade that I would like for you to be able to go to. And that's going to take up a chunk of time that normally we would be doing homeschool instruction on. So homeschool instruction is going to be cut short because we instead are going to go on a field trip to the bottom of the hill so that you can see your teachers. We had to wait quite a while because they were running, I think, really behind the schedule, but totally worth it. The kids really enjoyed seeing their teachers. It was a ton of fun. And I was surprised at like how many cars it was. And it was, a, I, I didn't count or anything, but it was a ton of vehicles that ended up coming through. And they, they being the teachers, like they really, they really went all out for this. I was impressed. I know a lot of times, sometimes I'm, well... <laughs> Frequently, I'm complaining about something with the school or the teachers, but I had nothing but love for the school and the teachers this last Friday. It was really exciting to see them all decorate their cars. In fact, David's teacher decorated her car and she had all of the kids' names written around it. And she was excited when she saw him and, you know, you know, you get to point and jump up and wave. All of the teachers were honking their horns. And what this whole parade did is it got the kids excited. The teachers actually looked happy and excited as well. And it reminded me as a parent who is sometimes complaining about all the teachers that these teachers are people too. You know, I saw spouses driving cars. I saw teachers in there with their own kids. I saw different staff personnel together teaming up in a vehicle. And it just re it just really personalized the teachers to me as well. Because, they I mean, they, they drove their own personal vehicles going through there. And they took time to decorate their cars. And they took time to go and see their students it, in, in a way that was meaningful that they could. Uh, with the resource that they had available to them. And it was really meaningful. So I was a big fan of the parade. I'm glad that they did it. And it was a lot of fun. I think the kids both enjoyed it too. We, all, we also got lucky because it was a pretty nice day. So it was fun to be outside. The kids took their scooters. And so while we were waiting, they would ride back and forth up and down on the sidewalk they also enjoyed getting it. So we, we doubled it. We called it PE time as well. And it worked. It worked for us. They, uh, they enjoyed dropping off their letters to Jordan, playing on the scooter and waving to all of the teachers. But kind of with that on the theme of the school and teachers, I do want to transition a little bit over to some of the lessons learned that I have also come come to realize. So when I did this whole, hey, I really need to recharge my batteries thing, uh, with some of that downtime, I also started thinking that perhaps it is time to reevaluate, you know, what is working and what is not working here at home in terms of the dynamic of homeschooling and working from home at the same time. Because I will say, I would do 
things differently if I were a stay-at-home mom. So if I were able to be at home during this time period and not have to worry about working in the household at the same time that the kids are doing their schoolwork, I probably would have a different approach and a different plan. So these lessons learned are keeping in mind from a working mom at home with kids at home. Things I have learned. Bedtime is important. So I know I had shared with you guys in the first episode that my children at that point were basically nocturnal because I needed them to sleep in late so I could get some work done. And while that worked really well for me on the working end, it did not work particularly well for me on the homeschooling end. So for us, or rather for me, the sweet spot seems to be a 10 p.m. bedtime. That gives the kids enough time to, you know, settle in and still get to bed, hopefully, before it's too desperately late and get up at a reasonable time in the morning. I do still like them sleeping in a little bit because I enjoy that extra quiet time to get work done where I'm not being interrupted because when the kids are up, I feel like I am interrupted every five to 10 minutes unless I just let them watch TV all day, which I don't like to do. So 10 p.m. seems to be a good time. The other thing that has worked for us that we have not consistently done that is part of my reboot portion from my lessons learned that we are going to be doing is we are going to have a start your day deadline of like 10 a.m., for example. And that way school will be starting by 10.30 or 11, somewhere in there. That gives me enough time to get some of my own work done get the kids started on their schoolwork that they can do independently because there is some that they can do independently. Then take my break in the afternoon to do the stuff that I need to do with them one-on-one. The other thing that's going to be coming back is reading out loud. So that's something that when we were doing solely, you know, mommy school and mommy school plans was they would read out loud to each other. Once we started getting work from the school that we were required to turn back into the teacher, then we kind of cut reading out loud out of the program because I was running out of time to go over everything and get everything done, partially because they were sleeping, they were were used to sleeping in quite late. So this, hopefully, they'll be able to sneak in the reading out loud time period uh, in, in that independent time that I've kind of built in for them to work by starting at, you know, 1030 or 11. The other thing that I'm going to bring back for them is what we call or what the school calls the AR test. So we had done some of that with Elena. David really hadn't done any of that. But I realized in looking at it, oh, you know what, it's still something he can do. It just requires more work on my part to go through, figure out which books are available for AR tests. Then you have to go to a different app to see if that book is available And, you know, you just have to have that information prepped beforehand so I can show him where to find it. And then that's something that he ultimately will be able to do independently. And we tried that today and it worked really well. So I think we're going to try and continue to have that be another way to incorporate reading. The other thing that has worked for us that is going to stay, which is much to David's chagrin, is one of the apps, which is called MobyMax. It is set up fairly well so that the kids can work on particular concepts. So um, like phonetic concepts, reading comparative concepts, number concepts, and they can do it independently within that app. So when I, this last week, we utilized that quite a bit because I was like burnt out on putting together everything. So for Elena, I get a list from her teacher what she needs to do. I don't get that from David. So I kind of have to build that based on the packets that they had previously given and then kind of add some things to fill in to round out the rest of his time. And I, like I said, last week was recharge week. So that didn't occur. But with the Moby Max, it does allow that to happen and bring in some of those concepts where, and it requires, it requires less work on my part, which is why I like it. So that's definitely going to stay. What is going to have to come back Uh, Lesson learned, do not skimp on your prep. So that was my lesson learned. Uh, Because this last week when I did not prep 
their packets or what they're going to be working on the night before. It was it was more chaotic. It was more disorganized. They did less schooling. And it just, you know what? I just need to take the time. I just need to take the time and do it the night before and prep it. It worked so much smoother overall. And they did so much more overall when I took the time to do that. And so I do really feel like that was a valuable use of time. So that's definitely going to be coming back. The other thing that's going to be staying in the schedule is the scooter slash run for PE. So instead of it having be something that we, you know, just kind of do whenever, I think we're just going to pick days and be like, hey, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we we do the scooters and mommy walks with us or runs with us and we go around the block. Every time I ask the kids, you know, what's something that you like about school? They always say scooters. So because it's something that they like, we're just going to add it into the program. We're going to keep it. That's going to be our PE. So we're not going to have it be running to the mailbox anymore. We're, it's going to be doing the scooters. Besides, we can take our letters with us when we're on the scooter and go down there. Um, and I think that that it will work out better for the kids overall. It also is going to make me kind of structure my schedule and planning because I'm going to have to build that time into like the the two, two and a half hours that I allot myself to do homeschooling with the kids. And so that's just going to have to take up some of that time. What is not working for us that is just, it's just getting scratched is the whole home ec project. So I had shared with you a couple episodes ago that I wanted to have the kids do more help with meal planning and let them pick a meal. They could then figure out what ingredients were necessary for it. And then to follow it off when the meal was getting cooked, they were going to help mommy cook it. I still think this is a great idea. However, this is not a great idea when I'm trying to get everything done and I'm running up against the clock. It just, it has not worked out well in terms of timing. Anything I add the kids to to anything. Oh, uh, help me do this. Or you're going to learn how to do this. The task at hand always takes longer. I've realized that because we are on a schedule, dinner actually does have to be served between 7 and like 7.20 is probably the latest. And we need to have it then to accommodate Mike's schedule. Otherwise, he doesn't get to have dinner because he has to go to work. So because of that, you know, I just don't have, I just don't have the time right now with everything else that's going on. So that one is getting trashed in the file and maybe over the summer we might try and bring it back. But what is also here to stay, we have decided, is movie night. So I think it was the first episode I shared with you that we did a movie night. We went all out for it. Every Friday since then, we have continued to do a movie night. The kids love it. They look forward to it. It's something that they talk about during the week. Oh, what movie are we going to do for movie night? So that's going to be here to stay. How we do movie night is we basically do a slumber party with the kids and I in the living room on Friday night. And we've done different variations of it. We've done variations where they make what we call a nest, which is a whole bunch of blankets and pillows on the floor. And we move the coffee table out of the way. We've done it before where the kids are each on a different couch and they're going to sleep on the couch. We've also done it where they bring down, they have these really big bean bags that they got for Christmas this last year, where they bring down their big bean bags and they make like a little bean bag bed uh, and they watch their movie and they sleep in their little bean bag bed fort that they made. So we've done various different variations. I never know which sleeping arrangement they're going to pick, but I do know on Friday night, uh, we're all sleeping in the living room together somehow. We also do a whole bunch of different snacks for it. So what I guess this might be an area where I can build in some of my home ec stuff because sometimes the snacks are store-bought snacks, excuse me, store-bought snacks. And sometimes they are homemade ones. So like, for instance, this last week, it was all store-bought. We bought Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle ice cream. We made popcorn. Then we had some fresh fruit with it. And oh, very important, soda. So the kids don't get a lot of soda pop throughout the week, but they do get a glass of soda with Friday night movie. And that is probably one of the reasons they like the Friday night movies also. Um, But the week before that, we did for our snack, we did popcorn and homemade blueberry ice cream, which was a hit. Um, Yes, the kids love the the homemade blueberry ice cream. That's their favorite. And they actually helped make the blueberry ice cream. So they doubly liked it. What I think was not as successful for our family anyways was game night. So 
I'd share with you all, I'm not a big game person, but I did think it would be nice to give it a shot. So we tried game night probably about two or three times. The first time, successful, kids really enjoyed it, had a blast with it. But then the next time we went to go do it, it was like Elena still was into it and wanted to do it. But David just was like, no, I'm not interested. I don't want to do it. And ever since then, it's kind of been the same thing. Like one kid wants to play one game and the other one doesn't. And so game night is something that we may do on occasion, but it definitely is not, it was, it's not going to be a a consistent staple in our household. It just wasn't a great fit for us. And kind of on this concept of, you know, lessons learned, I did also spend a little bit of time this week you know, taking a beat and just kind of thinking, you know, um, for myself, you know, what are my lessons learned on the homeschool front? And, you know, how do I apply that to myself? Like, am I where I need to be? Am I doing everything I need to be doing? Am I, am I doing enough? Because there is always, always going to be something else that needs to get done that has to happen. And one of the things I also realized when I kind of took this, this week of somewhat rest is that um, there is a lot that goes into keeping things moving. And there is a benefit in having some of those things happen. So slacking off, for instance, on laundry uh, means that now I have, it's small, but I have a small pile of clothes on the laundry couch that I had so been so excited to get cleaned off a while ago. Um, And you know, it does, it takes time, it takes energy. And so one of the things that I just, I settled in on, and I just kept coming back to it. So it's from Hebrews 12, one. So it is, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. And at first blush, you might be like, why? What are you even talking about, Jen? So here's here's where my great love of this verse comes from. I love this verse so much because I actually used to have it written on a permanent marker on like the first set of running shoes that I had when I really, really started to get into running. And what I liked about it was it reminded me that I wasn't running anyone else's race but my own. Uh, And for a runner who's not particularly fast, that's probably a necessary mindset to have. Otherwise, you're going to get discouraged really early on. Um, So I've always loved this verse. But for some reason, I kept coming back to it. And I was like, I don't get it. I don't get why why, why do I keep coming back to a, a verse about running when, one, I'm really not running much, and two, uh, I don't see how this helps me right now, God. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, I just, I, the more I thought about it, I realized, you know, um, I'm not even too sure what course I'm on <laughs> right now. Like, am I where I need to be doing? Am I focusing my energies where it needs to go? And it reminded me, for whatever reason, what came to mind was this race that my girlfriend Karen and I had done, gosh, had been, I don't know, three, four years ago now. And it was up in Issaquah. It was in February. The, the, it had been raining for just like days and days and days beforehand. So it was this pretty hilly, muddy, uh, relatively decent elevation gain throughout it run and it was oh my gosh it was absolutely miserable <laughs> I, at one point I remember Karen and I were there and I was like I don't know like how long were they leaving those mats out those timing mats out for are we gonna finish this on time because I mean at one point I was practically just walking because there the it was so steep and these rocks there were so much rocks and mud and just water like we were literally forging through like it felt like a lake it was supposed to be a small stream but it had just overflown with water so much I mean we were just completely covered with with mud I mean I have pictures of us and the mud's got to be up to I want to say like knee like just below my knees uh Karen's got one and it looks like it's maybe to her knees in one area like it was just wild it was a miserable miserable course in fact I think that was the only time 
I've been on a run where I was like, this is not fun. I am not enjoying this course at all. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to finish this. And Karen and I were talking at one point and I had told her, I was like, you know what? We're getting pretty close to uh, when they're going to have to pull the mats. And we were like kind of timing it out for like where we were. And at that point, she was a bit of a, well, not a bit. She was, she was a stronger runner than I was. And I knew that if she went on her own, she would definitely be able to cross the finish line before they pulled the mats. However, the pace I was going at, you know, it was, it was going to be borderline. It would probably be within, I want to say it was like between 15 minutes. If I, if I, if I really pulled out all the stops, maybe I'd make it. Uh, if not, you know, I, I'd be close, but not quite there. So what I had told her was to go ahead. I go, you know what? Go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'm going to keep going and, you know, run your race and I'm going to run mine. Uh, I go, and your job is to make sure that they don't pull those timing mats before I cross the finish line because I am going to finish this race. And what kind of got me like refocused in that moment and like re-pumped up with energy is I was thinking, you know, I'm going to finish this race for Laz. So I was part of a running group called I Run For. And what it does is it matches up able-bodied runners with special needs, kids, and or adults. So the whole concept is you as a runner are running for someone else with special needs that maybe can't run for themselves. And so I was, I think I was even wearing my I Run For Lazaro shirt un underneath all of my layers. But I was like, no, I'm running for less. Like this race is for him. And that got me you know, excited again about this miserable race that I was in. And I was like, I'm going to finish this. And I, I will tell you, I did finish that race. I think I actually may have been the last person that crossed the finish line before they pulled the mats. There were, I want to say, two or three uh, ladies behind me, and I don't think any of them finished. They were all uh, what's called a DNF, did not finish. So that was one of my, well, not one of, that was probably the roughest race I have ever run. And that, I share this all with you. Because what got me through that race, what got me through that course was I realized I wasn't running it for me. I was going to run it for Laz and that's what was going to get me through. And I share this all with you because I think that's where I am right now in my life. I am running a race, a course in my household <laughs> that is not marked out exactly for just me. I need to get through this. And I need to run this. And all the stuff that are on my course that need to get done, they're not things I like. They're not things I enjoy. In fact, half of them are things that I, all right, okay. I, you know, I don't care as much about X or Y or Z. But it matters to the other people in my household around me. And right now, the course that God has marked out for me is to be in my home. Like I clearly have been called to my home because I'm here in my home. And that there are things here in my household that I can and am being, quite frankly, called to do uh, more so. And so unfortunately, I think uh, I do know the, the course that God has marked out for me. I just don't particularly love it. You know, I want a course that looks like flat and smooth, or maybe even slightly downhill. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not my course. My course right now is the muddy hills of Issaquah in the in the pouring down rain. <laughs> um, it's just what that looks like is, that looks like dishes, that looks like laundry, that looks like clearing things out, that looks like going through my kids' clothes and redoing it all, that looks like being the homeschool teacher, that looks like also being the family chef, and I'm not very good of a cook. <laughs> you know, it also looks like, you know, working, you know, working from home. And so my goal now that I have had a chance to recharge my batteries is to run my race with perseverance because it has clearly been marked out for me. I know it now. I just have to run it and I just have to give it my all. And so I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys, some of those thoughts. I do hope that you guys are all running your race with perseverance. Remember, it's it's the race that God has marked out for you. Like all of our courses look differently and and that's okay that they look differently. In fact, that's probably a good thing because we're also all in different places. But 
like I said, I just kind of want to share those two cents with you guys. I also want to say a big thank you to Studio 73 Productions for sponsoring the show, as well as a thank you to my husband, Mike, who is my producer, sound tech engineer, and does all of the editing. So thank you, sweetheart. I really appreciate everything that you do for the for the podcast. And if you like us, hit that subscribe button, like us. You can support the show on Patreon. Also, you can email me at thedailygrindwithjen at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at dailygrindjen. Love to hear from you if you have ideas for the show. If you'd like to sit down for a cup of virtual coffee over Zoom, uh, let me know. Anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will talk to you later, friends. Bye.